Wow, so we bought this place, 40 acres, southwestern Montana, it is gorgeous. And there were, how many deer in the yard this morning? Like over here under the window, there was a buck, big buck right over here. Um, there were deer walking all around the house right here. And uh, it's kind of crazy, but look at this. This has been, you know, we bought this for the land. We didn't buy this for the house. The house is mediocre and it needs a ton of work. And you can see what we've been doing. So let me show you, we've learned some things and we're gonna show you what we learned. Hopefully this will help you guys if you're ever doing this kind of uh, remodel, uh, tear and floor out. We've learned some things that really sped us up. Had we known them, let's share them with you. Let's come inside. Okay, so this tool is a tool you need to buy. This is something I wished I had when I was a kid and I worked construction we were doing this. This thing is a, a time saver and a lifesaver. So it's expensive, I think it was 30 bucks. And you're like, do you need that? Can't I just use a crowbar like we always did? Yes, but get with the times, get this thing. This thing does so many things and I'm gonna share, that does four things for us and I'm gonna share one thing at the end that would have saved us a ton of time had I known it and it's not a typical use for this thing. But you know, it has a flat edge right here. See that sharp edge right there? So you put it up against the wall and then you just pound on it get it behind the baseboard, rip the baseboard out, and you don't rip it like that because that'll put pressure on your wall. You turn it like that because you're putting pressure on the bottom plate right here, the two by four that's underneath there. You twist it like that and that pops the board out and then um, you can just kind of go down and just keep popping and popping and popping. And so this thing is, is amazing. And so the other thing it does, see that thing right there? As you pound it down, it pushes the baseboard away from the wall. So as it goes down, it literally pushes it away. So it actually helps to accelerate getting the nail out. Some of these nails are, you know, they're two inches long. They're going through the baseboard, they're going through the drywall and into the, into the bottom plate there. So that's a long nail. The other thing you can use it for, see that notch right there? See this nail right here that got left by the tack board? Oh, so you can use it for tack board. That's the second use. Um, I didn't think about this, but my wife was using this for the tack board. She'd just slide on the tack board and whack one time, pop it up, and then just walk down and pop, pop, pop. And um, that worked really well as well. And it's got a nice, it's not sharp, but it's enough of a sharp edge that it'll get underneath the tack board even. The third use is this right here. See that nail that got left by the tack board where it broke up around it? Pop, up goes that nail. And of course you can use a hammer, but look, your hammer doesn't fit there. You know it's not going to get the head of the nail, so you, have, you do have to come in from the side, which isn't a big deal, but that's nice because that does three things. Let me show you the fourth thing and the most important thing. Okay, so let's look around the floor here for just a minute. And this, this was all carpet. Of course, carpet has tack board around the edges, which we already talked about, but the most uh, annoying thing about pulling up carpet, carpet comes up easy, right? You can cut it, you can just roll it up and carry it out. But the most annoying thing is the padding that's underneath the carpet, they staple down, right? And so those staples are freaking everywhere. And those, so those staples are literally, we go around with pliers and pull them out with pliers. I've used screwdrivers. I've done this lots of ways. So right at the very end, <laughs> we found out that this is the tool for that. And you could probably use another kind of scraper as well. But um, we had one row of staples left and my wife had just started on it. And I went and she, you know, would have probably taken her 10 minutes to get all those staples out. Um, sitting there pulling them and pulling them and pulling them by hand with pliers. I went down the row and in 30 seconds had all the staples knocked out with this thing. And here's, I only have one staple left in the floor. I'm going to show you how we did it. Okay. This staple is not all the way in. It's partially, it's kind of pulled out a little ways. But basically, you can just slide it down and run to the staple. Now what I did was I put my handle down like this and just put my hand right here and just gone it just rips them right out and you'll see the staples because they'll have little pieces of that foam um, that padding that's underneath the carpet when you rip up the padding it'll leave the staple of course in a little piece of foam that's trapped under the staples so you can see the staples most of them pretty easily just run over them and so there's a whole line of them I just went like that and I'm sorry I don't have one to demonstrate to you but it works so well I just literally did that and it just knocked all the staples out and here's another staple I don't know how we missed that one and look at this, how did we miss this? I mean, we vacuumed this floor twice. I've been over this floor several times. Here's a staple right here. You can see the little bit of uh, padding that's underneath there. Ta-da. Okay, here's a couple more tools. This one's from Harbor Freight. It's a five inch floor scraper. I didn't think I'd ever use this, but it's really good for where there's glue that we're trying to get up. Um, it's got kind of a sharp edge, so it's not a good like bolt scraper to break up big stuff. But for small stuff, 
and glue that's on the floor that you're just trying to get up so you're not sticking to the floor everywhere. It does a pretty good job. Okay, so that's a tool. It's not expensive. Here's another tool that we really liked. Never owned one of these before, but I don't know the, all the little things it does. Looks like it'll pop a nail there with that thing. It's got kind of a beveled edge right there, so that's kind of nice. It makes for a good scraper. What I like best for is not scraping up glue, because this thing is superior, but for getting in corners like right over here. When you want to scrape crap out of corners and get something really stiff and strong, or get underneath the edge of something, that little point does a good job also run it along like that and so this this has been kind of an extra tool it's not big giant thing like this scraper now this scraper we bought at Harbor Freight I forget how much it was but it was you know I thought well it's a Harbor Freight one it probably won't last long we've done the whole house with this thing with one blade it looks like it has a reversible blade there's another one there we haven't reversed it of course you can take it off there we bought like three extra blades just to have them and ended up not even using them and this blade is still in good shape And uh, we literally scraped the whole house, well, not the whole house, but everywhere we needed to scrape up. Uh, this is what we've used. It's not super long, but it does a good job. What we learned with it is um, when you're using it to put your shoulder, I put my shoulder over it and my hand on it here, put my arm straight and use my body weight. Try to keep this trapped against my hip. I'm trying not to use my shoulders because my shoulders aren't in good shape, so I'm trying not to do this. But I'm trying to just keep my body weight on it like this and just kind of lean back and forth. And see it's still scraping up stuff there that we didn't get before. But that really helps it cut down. That really helps it cut down and dig and scrape off the stuff that you want to scrape up. And I forget how much it was at Harbor Freight, but it was like 40 bucks at True Value. And I'm sure it was cheap, a little bit cheaper at Harbor Freight. So it's been a good one. So you can see all the lines here where we scraped with this. And look at all the glue that's left. And we've just got a little extra time, so we're trying to get this cleaned up as good as possible. So this scraper, even though it has a nice sharp edge on it, just you know, it doesn't get all the glue up, and that's a lot of weight to push. This seems to work a little bit better, this Harbor Freight thing. And same thing, I'm just putting weight down on it like this, and then driving it with this arm, and putting my weight down with this arm. on these um, where we scraped it this way with the big scraper this is catching on the edges going this way but you can see how much more it's getting up it's still leaving a little tiny bit but at least now when we walk on this our feet aren't sticking to it Okay, so this is what the tool is called, the Zenith Trim Puller. And I wished I'd had this, you know, I'm in my 50s now, and I wish I had this when I was a teenager, when I was working construction. This thing would have saved me so much time and uh, effort. And uh, this is so worth $30. I would highly, highly recommend it. I don't get anything from this company or Home Depot who we bought it from. Don't get anything. It's just a good tool. It's worked well for us, and hopefully it'll help you guys out. All right, thanks for watching.